Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Kerry and today I will be showing you how I fixed a crack in the plastic casing of the extruder assembly of my Flashforge Adventure 3 3D printer. So it turns out that in the last video when we were replacing our um, Bowden tube coupler and we took out the threaded insert from the, the casing, it appears that we cracked the casing <laughs> while doing so. Um, I don't think there was any way, other way we could have done it. There was, I just couldn't unscrew the, the coupling from the threaded insert. So taking it out, I think in that situation was the only way to, to move forward with that repair. Uh, but now we have a crack and we need to fix it. So I contacted one of my friends who also has one of these 3D printers and has very valuable advice. And he actually had the same problem <laughs> when he uh, replaced his, his coupler. So he fixed his crack with... Let me rephrase that. <laughs> he fixed the crack in his 3D printer using epoxy glue <laughs> but uh, you'll see in this video that I actually used epoxy putty instead to to repair the crack in my printer okay so when deciding how to best fix this crack I had to take into account three things uh, one the the crack I couldn't quite squeeze it together I couldn't squeeze the casing together to close up the crack really well so whichever solution we went with would have to be something that could bridge the gap in the crack um, also the damaged area is on the top of the extruder assembly so it is kind of close to where all the heating happens um, so whatever solution we used would kind of have to withstand at least some raised temperatures. I'm not exactly sure how hot it gets at that point, we could measure it, but to be safe, we could just take what we would normally use to, to print about what, two, 10, 20, 30, 230 degrees, a maximum maybe, um, that our solution would have to at least be able to withstand that temperature, worst case. And thirdly, the, um, as I said, the top of the casing is cracked, so, the rest of the extruder assembly lies underneath. So the solution we chose couldn't be too runny or something like that, that it might like seep through and mess up and get onto everything. <laughs> so we didn't want anything that would uh, seep into where it shouldn't be going. So in the end, based on what I could find on my local uh, online stores that could be delivered quite quickly <laughs> um, and something that I wouldn't need too much or any more equipment for than I uh, had already lying around. I decided to get the epoxy putty. So apparently epoxy putty is actually perfect for if you need to make um, small repairs that need a higher strength, which I think in this case it fits that perfect, perfectly. <laughs> the one I bought says that it can withstand temperatures up to 260 degrees, so that's perfect. It's well above what we decided our worst case threshold should be. During this next section of the video, I'm going to show you how I prepared and applied the epoxy putty. So I started by clearing the area of the wires that were kind of in the way. Uh, then I grabbed my PPE. It's very important when working with epoxy to make, to make sure you wear your gloves and a mask and eye protection if you have. I could then start unpackaging the epoxy from the vacuum plastic, which is sitting around it. I used a knife for this, taking care not to dig too deeply into the putty to, uh, while trying to cut off the plastic. Next I needed to cut off a piece of the putty. So how epoxy putty works is that the, the A and B parts are both there in this epoxy stick, except the one part is on the outside and the second part is on the inside. So you'll see when I cut it open, they are slightly different colors. The outside is a different color and different texture to the inside. So if I smoosh these two together and mix them up, then it will start the chemical process of curing the epoxy. Mm. 
So once I've mixed it up, I only have a few minutes according to the instructions to actually apply and get it all ready before the curing starts. So I was in a bit of a hurry and sorry about the camera angle, but I kind of knocked the camera into a bad angle and I didn't really have time to fix it. So I just full steam ahead. <laughs> um, I tried to put it on with just my fingers, but that wasn't working. So I ended up getting a toothpick and applied it to the area with the toothpick. And that seemed to work quite well. Um, I needed to apply both sides of that uh, Bowden tube coupler without actually getting it on the, the coupler itself. I just wanted to secure the casing to stop it from moving around during printing. I spent a lot of time using the toothpick to make sure it was all smooth and in, in place making sure it was properly covering the crack, nothing more. Apparently you can also use water to smoothen out the finish. So perhaps next time I will do that because the end result didn't look that great. <laughs> and that's it. It's as easy as that. So once it's applied, all we have to do is just wait for it to cure which is apparently one hour but I left mine overnight just because it was late <laughs> so I went to bed and had a look at it the next morning and this is what it looked like the next morning it pretty much looks exactly the same as it did the night before maybe a different color but it has definitely gotten much harder and it looks really strong it Visually and uh, aesthetically, it looks really bad. <laughs> but if I wanted to, with this epoxy putty, you can actually machine it uh, or paint it if you want to, which is one of the advantages. But the most important thing is that when the Bowden tube connector moves around, the casing stays secure. So this means that our uh, connector shouldn't be popping out during printing anymore. So now we know that it's cured, we pop everything back in place and do a test print. And I am happy to report that the test print went really well and I have actually been printing non-stop since with no issues at all. The Bowden tube connector is staying put where it should be. Um, so this solution may not be the prettiest, but it was by far, I think, the easiest solution with the best results. The epoxy glue solution looked really good, but I think it may have been a little bit more complicated to implement than this one. But yeah, in the end, uh, the solution is working and that's all that counts really. We can print again. Yay.